This is our program, Gada, and this edition, we deal with the second part of Fimfine. Fimfine is the capital of Oromia, the capital of Ethiopia, and the seat of African Union headquarters. In this part two of our edition, we talk about how Fimfine is handling cultures, values, and history of the Oromo. An Oromo hero, General Wak Ogutu, once said, this literally translates as, we uproot slavery. If we fail ourselves, we would raise our children to deracinate it. The Baba Kudama is a resident of Infinite City. A son of the Baba Kudama, however, seems he doesn't care about the message of General Wagogutu. My son cannot speak of Anromo. Nothing. He doesn't know about his family at all. I personally can speak of Anromo. No doubt, he is now in the darkness. There are hundreds of youth like my son. Many of them don't know of Anromo and Oromo cultures, cultured of their people. Ruth Humnesa is a software engineering student at Addis Ababa University. She was born in Fifine City and grew up there. She developed a software and won a competition on a program called Cyberinia and got a award. But when it comes to her identity, she said, feels sorry. To me, Rutum Nisai Paral, Namaro, Addis Ababa University, Institute of Technology, I'm skilled on Maro. My name is Ruth Umnesa. I'm studying at Addis Ababa University and in Institute of Technology. Umnesa means strong. I'm proud of my being Ormo. Even though I cannot speak of an Oromo, I know that I am a proud Oromo. On the land where Oromo heroes like General Tadesa Biru have sacrificed their lives for their identity, Oromos of Infinity City failed to know identity, cultures, values, history, and language of their fathers and forefathers. When I was a kid, my parents used to tell me fox and riddles. But I could not learn of an Oromo as my friends in our locality cannot speak of an Oromo. Haile Mikael Gudeta is a lawyer. He witnessed that the past regimes had systematically forced Oromos out of Infinite City, their fatherland. Oromos have been pushed out of Infinite City by the policies designed by the past regimes. No discussion was held with Oromo clans in Finnish city. For example, Emperor Haile Selassie had officially declared that Amharic was the only language to be spoken in the country. He said that it was to bring unity in the country. By then, Amharic dominated every office, including commercial activities. Thus, Oromos who could not speak Amharic were technically forced out of their backyard in Finnish city. That way, Ormos were displaced from their homeland. Biratu Kanae is an instructor at Madolabu University. The issue of languages among the major factors that forced Oromo from Infinite City. They tell you not to speak of an Oromo. This pushed Oromo out of Infinite City and kept other Oromos away from coming into it. There is a great danger for Oromo identity. Kulukulu Ejo is also an instructor at Addis Ababa University. We ask students from Finfinne City about their identity in the university. Some do have even Oromo names, but they cannot speak of an Oromo. When I ask them which nation they belong to, they say that they are Finfinneans. They say their parents were Oromo. They do not know the difference between identity and birthplace. Oromos living in Finnish City are deleting Oromoness from their children. Unless something is done soon, it will be difficult to sustain identity of Oromo in this city. How come one loses his identity on his own fatherland. This is really a great failure. When one loses his or her identity, he or she loses the concept of birthplace and ethnicity. Ruth Homnesa has a lot to tell in connection to Oromo names. My name is not an Oromo name, 
but no one except Oromo pronounced my father's name correctly. Some even think that the way they call you is the right one than what you tell them. I remember that once a man whose name I don't tell you calls my father's name as Hailu. My mother is also an Oromo. Her name is Nabit Legesa Taye. Her grandfather's name was not Taye. It was an Oromo name. It was changed when he first came to Phoenix City. Such a pressure pushes you to find your identity. Artist Mastalu Tariku, or Funye, came to Fifine City from Shambu town of Horogudrua Lagazon. I came to Fifine City and opened a restaurant by the name of my son, Nasifai, and I wrote it in a Fanoromo alphabet. People were confused. I did so because I know that foreigners do also write with their alphabets in my country. Officials of the city told me that it is crime to write in a fan Romo. I told them how foreigners, including the Chinese, write their characters on what they have here. But that official told me that I can only run the business if and only if I change Oromo alphabets I used. He warned me that it is only possible to write in Amharic in this federal city. I know that Finfine is the capital of Oromia too, but people with power did not allow me to run my restaurant. You see, what is being done on Oromo? Painful. Land and identity are inseparable. Oromo praises the earth as follows. Dache nagambulte ya ngo yesa jira ke nyabata dua ke nyanyata meta kanda chefarsa jarti gara merga irike midani jelli ke bishani sirra kunne nyanne sirra horre yafne dache ya dinkitu yo sore sanyatu isa shitto kabu hiye sanjibitu isa chitto kabu literally it means earth everything for life everything for existence the water to drink and food to eat and when man dies it takes in and will be buried in the earth death takes both the rich and the poor and the earth becomes a grave for both the rich and the poor after the death of Emperor Minilik II, Liji Yasu, whose father was Anoromo, came to power in 1913 and stayed on power only until 1916. Oromos who heard what others gossip about Liji Yasu sang the following Ya Shagar, Ya Shagar, Ya Magala Yasu, Wanjet and Hajit and Yejekibi Ya Numbasu. This roughly translates as Oh Shagar, city of Yasu who came to power. Let them gossip about us. We go nowhere. In fact, this was how Oromos used to express their belongingness to Finfine City than any other ethnic group in the country. Shagar is an alternative Oromo name for Finfine City. Biratu Kanae is an instructor at Madolabu University. <laughs> When the people in the center of the city were displaced, the center gets different demography, and the displaced would resettle on Ormo land, displacing Ormo farmers. There, they live in condos. That way, Ormo farmers have been losing their land, their wealth, and their identity. I oppose the displacement of indigenous people, not development of the city. That development should embrace and integrate Ormo farmers there. <laughs> Loris Agaye Gabramedin wrote a poem entitled Atete Dubra Oromo. I love it. I have copied it and posted it in my bedroom. It tells my feeling. It is like saying, My civilization has become devilization. That made me forget you. That poem indicates how civilization failed to embrace indigenous cultures of the Oromo people. Loris Agaye Gabramedin Awesa is a renowned bard in Amharic pottery and playwright. He is himself an Oromo. Oromo still complain about Finfine city in songs that it lost the identity of the Oromo. Habebe Mananjuru Mali Kanshagari Ipa Ipsu. 
kesa wari akami kenya kaloni itnamatiksu. This plainly translates as, her baby is not at home. Who lit a torch? How are your families? Ours are tough enough that they keep us like herds of cattle. Fifine was made to lose its identity through different pressures over the last centuries. Fifine was founded by displacing Oromo clans from their fatherland. It is painful to lose one's identity on own land. These lines witness that Fifine has closed its doors to once its indigenous residents, the Oromo. Hey, Abitu and Galang clans of the Tulama Oromo used to live in Fifine City. The place where now the Oromo Culture Center stands in the city was ceremonial ground for Abitu and Galan Oromo clans. Recently, Afan Oromo Miriam schools have been opened in Finnish city. The schools have been named after Oromo heroes and historical places in Oromia. This is a great opportunity for Oromo children in Finnish city. Yeah.